Hey everyone, uh, Tim the Enchanter here. Um, so we're actually going to start into another Lua extension here for Cheat Engine. Um, this one, what we're going to be making is a Lua script template generator, or um, I guess you could call it a script engine. Uh, to me, it'd have to be compiled code, but but at any rate, um, just a way to give you know be able to make our own templates inside the uh, Lua script engine or the Lua the table script table Lua script window um, you'll see we're kind of doing some things here um, like we create a register Lua template function um, some of this isn't a hundred percent necessary but I do it this way because uh, for the auto assembler templates, um, Cheat Engine does give us access to a register auto assembler template. Um, so basically, when I set this up, I wanted to mimic that same behavior because when we go to work on an auto assembler uh, template deal, um, we can do you know use basically our same functions here, um, our same setup, but then we can just kind of call this and fill it up with you know our new templates and we won't have to actually add it to the form um, now this one we actually have to have a function that then adds the the template um, menu item and then adds all the menu items we need within that so that way we can then select it and kind of go from there um, but we'll go over all of it as we go um, so in the end, we end up basically dropping this file in the um, auto run folder. And what this will allow us to do is we'll be able to open Cheat Engine, then open the um, Lua script window, and then it'll give us, you know, we'll be making this menu item and then we'll be adding menu items to it. Now, um, the way I've set it up so far is it basically just uses this table here um, and we'll use the names we're adding to the table, you know, uh, the keys we're using as the um, menu item captions. Um, and then this will ultimately be the template. Um, now an auto assembler one, we want to auto fill a lot of this stuff. Um, for the Lua script one, what we're doing is we're going to actually set it up to where what it'll do is it will prompt us for each one of these um, and we'll kind of go over how we're, we've done that but ultimately like in the end we'll have it to where we can click that and then you know it wants the process name for this auto attach deal and then intervals and then once we enter that then we go ahead and we get our, our little template here um, and then that way we can you know generate whatever code we need for our Lua script. Um, and then again, we'll kind of build on this when we do the auto assembler one. It's just the auto assembler one, we're gonna, we're gonna wanna be able to grab a lot of that data, you know, um, through our code and fill up a, a, a data table that then use, you know, gets used for parsing this stuff so that way we don't have to enter in everything. Um, so the way we're doing this is we've got our templates table here um, and I do think at some point we'll kind of expand on this a little more. Um, but I just wanted to start with a real simple setup here. Um, so we've got our, our templates table here. And then we can just add, you know, various functions to this. I mean, we could kind of continue this down a little further and make a timer one. Um, and just add whatever code we want to make that right. I mean, obviously you would want an actual timer code here, but you know, just to kind of give an idea of how we can keep adding to this. Um, but I would like to eventually expand to where we're using uh, external files, um, just because to me that way you can get your syntax highlighting back and you know, and deal with each of these separately. Because otherwise, if you have a hundred of these, um, you can kind of get where this would be a long list you'd have to dig through anytime you wanted to change something. Um, and it can become a little cumbersome um, but just a few it really won't be a big deal 
So we've got our templates table here. And again, we're just using key, like even actually this timer, I think we kind of went over this, but um, since that one doesn't have a space in it, you can just set it that way um, and that would be fine. This one does have a space, so we, we needed to set the name in a slightly different way or set the key in a slightly different way to make it work properly. Um, and then we create a loaded templates table and that's just something that our, our uh, register Lua template um, function will use. Basically it'll load up whatever gets registered in this table. And then this way later we can go through that table and add the menu items that we need to add. Because um, we do need to do it in a kind of different way. So this way if we add multiple windows, we can still have that in multiple windows and it not just be in the one. Um, but again, we'll, we'll go over all that here in just a second. Um, so ultimately, once we've kind of got our, um, our base tables here that we need, um, one of the main functions we're going to be using is this interpret function. Um, and it's, it's kind of based on, um, anybody that's familiar with Python will kind of recognize that because that is a Python function that you have access to um, and it uses keys in exactly this same format to know where, you know, what to search and replace with. Um, and that way you actually give it, a, it's a tuple in Python, but it's essentially the same concept as a table for the most part. Um, where it just has keys and you know, and it will just search through that table for these keys and replace this with whatever that key returns. Um, and then here we do allow it to um, pass an initial table. Um, if one is not passed, then we go ahead and just create an empty table so that way we don't get a bunch of errors. Um, otherwise, we'd have to have extra checks and all that to deal with this. It makes it just easier just to know that this needs to be a table no matter what. Um, and so here we've got what we create a sub function within here that is our lookup function and all it takes is a key um, which in this case would actually be this full string. Whenever this gets you know by the time the way this search is set up it will hit this return this full string so we need to start the string here and then go back one and that's what that three minus two is. It's basically telling us that we want to just grab this substring um, for the key. And then that's where we just we look in that table for the key. Um, if that you know if that returns nil, then that's when we'll launch an input, you know, the input query. Um, so that way we can manually put in that value. And of course like even here we could um, actually do this in a slightly different way. This is where much like the auto assembler template deal we could make it you know use the um, process variable that Cheat Engine gives you access to so that way we could get the process name automatically. Um, just to keep this one a little more simplified I, I've stuck with this to where you would have to manually enter in the process name in this case. Um, but you know there are tons of ways we could do this um, so you know just as an example here we could do like that and you know, process dot dot and then get rid of this altogether and it wouldn't you know we'd only ever have to enter in a uh, the timer interval um, and again, you could actually just give it a default and, you know, know you'd manually change that later and you wouldn't even have to put in anything. So, I mean, exactly how you handle that will be kind of up to you and what you want to do with it. Um, again, just to kind of illustrate the idea of how to get it to where we, you know, we can input whatever we want here is kind of what I was trying to go with here. Um, and so for this, you know... Uh, Let's go back a little bit just because I'm not sure I explained this well enough. So we're looking up that table for a key that is basically, you know, starts at the, you know, it, it's kind of weird because it's one based. Um, one would actually be here. This is two. This is three. Um, and then here it's kind of a similar thing. This would be negative one. This would be negative two. Um, 
And that is something that Lua does. It allows us, we pass it a negative number to that sub. It will start at the, you know, the end of the string. But this way we're just looking in the table for, you know, this key or this key. Um, and just checking for that. Um, and then again, if that doesn't return anything, um, so like if you don't pass a table to it, which the way this is set up, we're really not passing a table. It will always just be an empty table. We then launch the infra query, and then we do the same thing here to give it the key, so that way we know what we need to enter. And this just this one is the title, and then this one would be the uh, the actual prompt, and then this would be the default value, which we're not giving it any default value. Again, we can kind of see that in action here if we we can see you know that's where we, we've got our title we've got the actual prompt text and then we've got no default value there and then of course we could actually be checking for nil on value upon the return and say if it returns nil then we want to cancel the whole thing. Um, the only catch is the way this function ends up working in the end is it still, it just wouldn't replace this with anything. So there's not really a, you know, a, there's just not a real well way to, to deal with that without returning multiple values. And then that would have to get passed to the generate script function. And then that would have to pass that back to another function and on down the line. So I just felt like leaving it this way was a little more simplistic. Um, once you do launch it though you've just kind of got to go through it and let it generate the script otherwise you know you'll just have blank values is all you'll end up with when it when it is done not sure why that got grouped up there but at any rate um and so here we're actually we do check for nil and instead of canceling we just go ahead and um basically if it's nil or an empty string then we want to just set value to the key so that way it, otherwise this would clear this out um yeah, i wish i kind of actually illustrated that before but but you can kind of see here to where it just goes ahead and returns these so that way we can kind of know we didn't enter in anything there. Um, and this would throw an error in cheat engine. So that way it would let us know right away we, if we didn't enter in anything and then kind of forgot about this, came back to it later, we would get an error right away and it would tell us that, you know, something was wrong with that. Um, and we would know, okay, come down to 51 and then see, oh, okay, we've still got part of our key set up here for the interpret function. And so from there, then if once we get our key, then we go ahead and we want to just return this or value. Um, and we could kind of do it up here. Um, essentially move this up here and then return just value, but uh, I chose to do it this way for some reason, to be honest. <laughs> I think it's more because this is a function I use somewhere else. Um, it just kind of modified it to work in this way with the input query. Um, but essentially, if you know we got a value, then this will be returning nil anyway. And so then it will just or and, and know that we need to return whatever the value is <coughs> or the value variable is. And so from there, that is the end of our lookup function here. Um, and then this is where we get into just using string.gsub. Um, now gsub is kind of a, it's really not too crazy if you're just first kind of messing with it a little bit. Um, what we can do is just search and replace things with gsub. So, So if we've got our string here, you know, um, hello test, then what we can do, actually I think it will print and give us back a number. Ah, let's go ahead and see what it does. I don't honestly remember. But if we just call gsub, we can just pass it, just 
you know, straight text. Um, so we can tell we want to look for test and then we want to replace it with world. And then there, yeah, it tells us how many were replaced. Um, and then so there you can see we get our string back here. Um, if we wanted to clean that up and only output what we want there, then we can just do string equals string g sub. And then print our string and we'll get that hello world where it replaces test with world. Um, but g sub you can it uses um, it's technically not true uh, regex or regular expression. Um, it uses Lua's own version of that, which just generally gets called Lua pattern matching um, or Lua patterns. Um, so that's you know kind of its own little subject. If you're real familiar with regex, you know even there you'll kind of notice that Lua just does it in a completely different way for some reason. Um, and a lot of languages kind of do that. It just depends on the syntax of the language and how they decided to handle it. Um, but we can also see here with G sub, we can just do, you know, straight search and replace. But, and that's kind of what we're using here. It's just um, G sub also allows a function. So this way, if what we pass it as a function, then it will pass whatever gets pulled using our expression here, our pattern. Um, it will then pass that to the function. And that's what we're doing here. So that way it will look through the, the, you know, it would look through, you know, a string that gets passed to it. And then when it finds something that matches that pattern, it will pass that back. Um, and basically with this, what we're doing is we've got our parentheses here. And that's what tells it that this is what we actually want to capture. Um, and then this one here, it, it gets a little more into the actual Lua patterns. Um, basically here we're just straight telling it that you know it's going to start with a dollar sign symbol um, and then Lua's patterns uses a percent symbol to mark special characters. Um, it's like if you've ever done a two string kind of thing you would know like percent X would be you know how you would uh, convert to a number to a hexadecimal number format. Um, and you can do lowercase or uppercase. Um, and it will do, you know, the letters in the hex number will be either lowercase or uppercase. Um, and of course, there's like percent D for decimal or decimal format, or I think more digit actually. It just it won't take floats, and then percent F for floats. And um, you can really dig into that more if you'd like. Just look up the uh, Lua pattern matching or Lua patterns. Um, Lua string patterns, maybe, would be the better keywords. And there's a lot of material on that. Um, what we're using here is percent B, which is basically percent, you know, telling it, it um, we're going to be giving it some brackets. And then it tells it whatever the next two characters are, that's our brackets. And so this way it doesn't matter. We don't have to give it like a wild card here. Um, which we could do it that way, but this way is just a little easier because it tells it we just want to match anything in between these two brackets. Basically, after it finds a dollar sign and you know a first bracket, it will know that it's going to match everything up to the next bracket, and that's kind of how we're grabbing these keys. Um, and again, this would actually be the full key, but that's how we're getting our, our key names, so to speak. And then it will pass that back to the, the lookup function. And then we kind of went over how we're looking up a value. And then once this returns, it will replace whatever this found with whatever this function returns. So in our case, it will generally always be, uh, with this particular use of this function, it will generally always be whatever the value is after the input query or the key itself if we didn't put anything in. So then from here, we've just got a pretty simple function for generate script. Um, and again, this kind of matches um, what I'm doing here is matching what would normally happen with the uh, register auto assembler template function that TGen does give us. Um, so this way, when we go again, when we go to make that script or that extension, 
um, a lot of this will already be familiar to you and you'll kind of understand what's going on but essentially we get a name passed whatever the name of the um, template is um, and then a you know it, it actually passes a script object which is um, it's actually a strings class um, we can kind of look at that a little bit here uh, let's go cheat engine lua text strings class um, and so that's kind of what this one is um, it's more or less like a list of strings per line um, and so you, we can't just like concatenate it together we actually do have to add text in, in a kind of certain way but that's you know so there we just we create our template by calling that interpret function and we pass it the template that we're using based on the name that's passed to us um, and that would end up being whatever key starts here so then you know and this right here this is all the uh, parsing you know uh, you know so far all of our parsing is done in this function so once we get to this this is the finished template it's ready to go um, and so from there all we got to do is add it to that script object now because the function does change the scripts object does change a little bit um, it's honestly been a while I can't remember I'm thinking it was 7.2 where the functions are slightly different I'll be honest with you I'm not I can't remember if it was maybe something that inherits from strings class and it it, it does it slightly differently but I do know different versions um, add text would be would work um, and then other ones we actually had to use set text um, and so that's what I'm doing here even though I swear both of these are saying add text is here add text and set text yeah again I'm, I'm gonna be honest I'm not remembering a hundred percent why I had to set it up this way but I do know I had problems when I didn't do it this way um, I'm actually wondering now you can kind of see here this would be more of the auto assembler template one um, we need to set up a table to pass values to it I've got a little bit more because these are kind of compiled templates yeah no I did the same thing there well, and I'm almost sure dark bike could probably tell you a better way to do this and tell me exactly why it's this way <laughs> or what you know what I misunderstood to do it this way I just I honestly can't remember exactly what it was um, but I do know it was like a certain version of cheat engine this would throw an error because I was just originally using um, add text and then for whatever reason it, it doesn't exist I think maybe in older versions I might have to go back a ways further than 7.2 um, but from there it was you know so all I do here is we go ahead and check to see if add text is you know available as a function if it is then all we need to do is use add text so that way we'll just append our template at the end of whatever the the script is and that's so that way we can do kind of like what we solve with when we added that second one to where it doesn't clear all this out so this way if we wanted that you know the multiple if we had the timer and we want to do you know do an auto attach add a timer maybe add our um, way to add you know use modules directly or you know just whatever the code is um, that you're doing that you do enough of that you want to have a template for it it won't clear out the whole script it will just kind of append it on the end
but then if it's we don't have access to that add text function then we kind of need to append in our own way and so that's what we're doing here um, so if we don't have access to that function then we're going to get whatever the text currently is and then we're going to clear all the text and then we have to just set text and then just you know do an actual uh, concatenate here and just add the current text with the new template and then we'll set the text to that and that way it will set that full script to be whatever was originally there and then whatever we're adding to it and then from here if for whatever reason something goes completely wrong we're going to assume that this was nil and then I'm just going to say template not found and tell me what the template name was in case somewhere I you know I messed up my code um, as long as this name matches what we pass to it on down here and really the way this works is really shouldn't ever throw an error here um, and that's kind of the reason why I don't even throw an error because it's just a never trigger but Sometimes even I like to just put in little extras just in case I'm completely wrong. Because um, I have made mistakes and just been wrong about an assumption before. Um, but so at any rate, that is our full generate script um, function here. You know, not really too complicated. I mean, once we kind of get through this function, we get to here. It's more just adding the template to the, the actual script window. Um, and then our register Lua template function here, like I said, it's just so that way we can have mimic behavior. Um, we can actually kind of go back and look at this one. And you can see I've got a load templates function here, but that's all it's, you know, a, a little more going on here because I've got settings files and different things going on. But um, at the end of the day, the main bulk of it is being done here. Um, so I don't actually have to add any template, you know, or any menu items or any of that. Cheat Engine will automatically do that to any auto assembler window that is opened. Um, I guess we could kind of show that here. And you can kind of see these are uh, all mine. I went in and added the custom to, um, so that way. I would kind of know but essentially that's you know it's it that was the idea was to mimic that behavior now we do have to add a little extra to be able to mimic that behavior <coughs> so here we just create a table of our template data and we're just going to load that into the um, loaded templates data um, and really all we're, we're looking after is the caption and the on click. Um, normally you can add a shortcut, um, but this one just to keep things simple, I'm not adding shortcuts yet. But again, we could actually make it to where this auto attach um, key points to another table that would maybe have a you know, name, uh, shortcut, and script variables. And then we could use that when we get to this, you know, and just make sure we set it up to where we're passing the right data. Um, again, I didn't want to get it too complex just yet. The idea is we'll add more features to this as we go. But so um, this was all we really needed to kind of mimic this behavior is we just load up this table and that way we, we you know once we've done that we have a you know the template is registered essentially um, now from here is what we get into to actually be able to add the menu items we need um, so one thing to note is cheat engine will when cheat engine first launches it will create this window the first one um, and it will exist on its own so while we do have like this um, form add notification function, which is something uh, that can be kind of useful to uh, register functions with Cheat Engine to know when something gets, uh, when a new form is created, um, that window will already be created. So we would not get notified. 
and thus we need to manually add the, the menu items to this form as well. And that's kind of all we're doing here is just a simple way to get the, um, the table Lua form. Um, and all we're doing there is we're just using uh, a couple base cheat engine functions here, get form count to know how many forms cheat engine has already created. And then we're going to basically iterate through the get form list and then just check the caption um, because the class is actually the, uh, if you see here, you can see it's actually the auto inject class. It's the same one as the auto assembler scripts, oddly enough. Um, because if we look at both of these, we can kind of see they're very, very similar. Um, I don't actually know how Cheat Engine handles that behind the hood, but essentially these are the same base forms, and then it just, you know, more or less changes this to execute script instead of OK. And then, you know, it, so it, it does function differently in the end, but essentially, as far as, you know, the class is concerned, um, it's an auto inject window. And so that's why we have to actually use the caption to capture that window. And then uh, if you noticed, keep closing that. When we created a new one, it doesn't show it as the Lua script cheat table because this one won't actually like save in the same way as this one does. This one would be more to just execute some basic stuff, um, kind of like we do with the Lua engine window. Would just give you a larger form to work with, I guess, is the idea. But so once we iterate through that list and we hopefully find the one we're looking for, then all we're doing is setting this local variable form to whatever that form was, and we're going to return that form so we can get that that window when we need it. Um, and really, we only need to do that once, so it's you know not entirely necessarily make it a separate function, but I just think it makes the code a little cleaner because this way we can kind of know exactly what this function is doing, and then instead of having it added onto here, we can just kind of know that we're that's what we're getting. We're just going to be getting the table Lua form, and then this one is where we actually load up the form templates menu. Um, so this one isn't too crazy. All we're going to do is because we know this menu item doesn't exist, we just go ahead and create a new one. Um, and we add it to whatever form gets passed to this function. We're going to add it to its main menu items. Actually, this is where we actually add it. That just makes it the parent. This just makes uh, form.menu.items its parent. So this way of for whatever reason, uh, something gets destroyed, it will automatically clean that up for us, is what that's about. But then here, yeah, we just go ahead and create our, our template menu item. We set its name, and then we set the caption. We add it to the main menu items. Um, and then all we do is we just iterate through our loaded templates data to get the submenu items. And so then here we, you know, make the parent our template menu item. We create the new menu item and then we set its name. Um, I go ahead and set menu item to add to that. And then here we're using that G sub function uh, to remove any spaces. So that way if we do have like how we got up here, it will just remove that space. So this one's menu item would actually be lowercase mi, then auto attach with no space. And then we go ahead and set the caption using the raw caption that we've set here, or that we've set up here. Um, this one I still actually do have the shortcut in there, but we're not actually getting any shortcut data, so it really doesn't matter. Um, the only two things we're passing to it is the caption and on click. And then so from here for our on click function, what we want to actually tell it is we got to pass it the script. Um, 
Again, this would all be normally done for us, so that's the reason why it's kind of set up this way is to keep mimicking the behavior that that this register auto assembler template function gives us. Um, so we actually need to give it the strings class um, object, which in this case would be the form, and then the um, assembly screen is basically this, you know, this, um, I can't remember the exact name of this class, but essentially it's, it inherits from memo, but basically this text window here, and then the lines is what is actually that string class. Um, so we're just going to pass our function there to this, you know, the data here, the on click. Um, and so in the end, whatever gets passed here as on click, we're just calling that function. We're passing it the strings class object for the auto assembler window or the uh, Lua script window and then sender. Not really necessary with this one. We don't ever actually use it. But again, we're just kind of mimicking that same behavior. And then we um, actually add to our menu, uh, the main templates menu item and go ahead and add our new menu item once we've got it all set up. Um, again, I'm hoping this isn't too confusing, but essentially all this is just getting set, you know, having things set up. Um, because in the end, what we're actually going to be calling is this register script. Um, you can kind of see here when we register our Lua template, we're giving it the name that we get from the templates table, which is the key, um, because pairs returns a key and value. We could even just use K and V as a real common way to name these variables. Um, being a little more explicit can be better, so that way we know that you know this is our template name, and then the value is the actual template itself. So when we register our template, we're just going to pass it that name and then a function. And then in that function is where we actually call our generate script function. And so that way when, again, we get back here, because this data table is the template's data, it just has the, the um, caption and on click that we have passed this way. Um, so essentially it's, you know, I mean, I, like I said, it does get a little tricky here. We're doing a little more um, to get this set up right. I'm, not, I'm just hoping I'm not confusing everybody. I feel like I'm getting confused just trying to explain it. <laughs> so if you feel like you are, don't feel too bad. Um, I'm the one who freaking wrote it, and even I'm starting to think, this is confusing as shit. <laughs> you know? Anyway, so... Um, so yeah, in the end, we're just going to be that on click function will ultimately be this function that calls our, our generate script function, um, and we could almost do it directly, but this way we can pass a, a name to the generate script function. But again, that does actually mimic this behavior a little more, um, and really the the generate script function just needs to have a script and a sender um, so you could have separate functions for every one of the templates you add but for me to make it work with a single uh, function I, I have to have the name I gotta know what template you want me to generate um, so that's why we kind of have to do it in this little odd way of you know a, a function that calls another function um, just so we can pass that name to it. And then from there, we just tell it we want to load. Once we've got all of our templates set up, or all of our templates registered, um, that's actually the better word I need to hear, use here, because that's load templates is just registering all the templates in that templates um, data table we've got up top. Once we've got all of our templates registered, then we want to load our templates menu items that we need, um, or load the the form templates menu. 
and that's where we're, first we're going to go ahead and tell it to do you know the main form that's already been created um, and then I am technically using a thread here um, it's not a hundred percent necessary but it does make it to where cheat engine will load up faster um, and then when we call yeah, no, that's not threaded either it's on the timer though so but the, the idea is just not to freeze up the UI when this is going on um, here you'd probably never notice it with just one or two templates but if you've got a bunch of them um, you would notice it load cheat engine a little slower and then so after that um, so with our thread we go ahead and we do terminate thread because uh, any thread you need to manually terminate it, otherwise it'll never end it'll just kind of carry on into whatever code is compiled after this so we actually do have to tell it to end the thread in the end um, and then from there we use the uh, we're going to be registering a function with the uh, form add notification so this way anytime a new form gets created we can know about that um, and then here I still have a habit of putting it behind a timer just because I've run into issues in the past with older versions of Cheat Engine where not everything will exist yet um, so you can run into problems um, and that's why this is behind a timer but ultimately all we're gonna do is with this function we're just going to check to see if it's the right form and in this case we want to make sure it is the right class which is the auto inject and then to make sure we're not messing with auto assembler scripts um, we go ahead and check that caption to make sure it has that Lua script in it and essentially this is a part of a the Lua pattern matching it just tells it you know that this absolutely has to be at the beginning of the string so that way if we do make a new window it will know that the very beginning of the caption needs to be Lua script in this way um, so that way even if for some reason it's a custom window and it's my Lua script it won't add to that um, the way this is set up really I don't think you'd run into an issue without that but I just chose to be more explicit there um, and then from there if it is the correct form then we just want to do just like we did with the, the main one and just go ahead and add you know load up the uh, templates menu to that form um, and then from here our main code is just all we're going to do is we're going to add this function so we know whenever a new form is created and then we're going to load up our templates um, so that way our loaded templates data table will have everything it needs to have so each time a new form gets created we'll know about it and then again load templates actually loads up that first one while we're at it and that's kind of the the gist of this one and how it works um, I'm really really hoping I didn't confuse everybody uh, and again I feel like I kind of confused myself a little bit there um, but the you know the bulk of the you know uh, some of this is just trying to mimic what the other the way the auto assembler one works just so when we get to do an auto assembler functions all we're really going to have to mess with is this um, to add more functionality to it we'll still end up using this interpret deal but we'll end up passing it a table that will already have a bunch of other stuff added into it so that way we can have you know, a, you know an address a module name an AOB address you know it just kind of depends upon how we you know what all we want to add and the idea here is a lot of this stuff we'll be using um, what the actual memory view form uses so that way we can just have some lines of code selected in there and generate an AOB off of that and kind of go from there um, because with the auto I'm, I'm sure you've messed with those templates in the past um, because with those ones it does add a little more to the uh, go ahead and just attach to something here so we got some code when we 
actually work with this. Let's grab something that makes a little more sense. I don't think actually it works with multi lines, but um, but that way we can have it similar to this kind of setup to where we'll already know what address we're selecting here. It looks like it's actually the last one. Um, you know, get a I use hook name so that way I can name a bunch of variables based on that. But we can, you know, in the beginning we can set it up much like this. Um, to where that way you can just kind of customize this same template a little bit more. Um, but the idea is you do what we do want to be able to generate this kind of data for us. You know, our original bytes and all that that we'll be grabbing from here. When we get to that point. But, um. But so yeah, this one, I mean, like I said, most of the parsing is actually done in this interpret function at this point. Uh, just with the way it works. Um, I do know, uh, you know, I'll be putting um, this code up with this uh, tutorial um, and a link to where I post this on the um, opensheettables.org forum. Um, if you still haven't heard, that's kind of, I've moved over there. Uh, I don't want to get into all of that. There's some other videos you can watch if you want to learn about that. <coughs> but just know that's where you're going to have to find me from now on. Um, I'm not allowed on Fearless anymore. <laughs> so, uh, long story. But anyway, um, I'll be posting the code snippets there um, and a link in this description, this video's description to that post. That way you can find it real easy if you're just, you know, using uh, the... YouTube notifications or something like that. Um, I do encourage you to kind of go through this and, uh, you know, I, you know, really try and study it a little more. Um, I know I feel like after confusing myself with this video, I would have to go over this video a ton of times. So don't feel like you're the only one. Because <laughs> yeah. I wrote the code and even I'm like, man, I'd have to go through this a bunch. Um, but hopefully you kind of get the gist of what's going on here. Um, basically, we've just got our, you know, our actual parsing function here um, that replaces keys with whatever we input. And then when we generate our script, we parse the script, and then all we're doing is adding that script to the to our script, you know, whatever window is open and has called our function to ultimately call the generate script function um, and then we just need a way to register all of our templates um, we need a way to get the main window or the main Lua template engine or main Lua script oh, confusing myself here we need a way to get the main table Lua script window there we go um, and then we've just got to load up the templates on whatever form gets created. So this way if we create multiple windows we can do that. Um, and then we need to load up all of our templates and register them all. And then we just need a way to be notified of when a new window is, is created. So that way when we do create the new window it will have access to those same templates um, and we can kind of see this a little more in action now that we've added that timer one um, let me add an actual timer script and then just to give them more of an idea here um, cause once you start getting into making your own templating deal um, you can get pretty complex if you haven't seen um, now at opensheettables.org um, in the tools download section there are, I do have my uh, auto assembler and Lua script template engines. Um, and these ones are kind of more full fledged engines. Um, if you've ever done like an HTML templating engine kind of thing, um, you'll kind of understand how that works. Um, because this does actually, not only does it do the simple search and replace, but if we get into more of those. executed code there. I think it's only in the um, auto assembler one so far. 
Um, but you can kind of see here, this one actually does allow uh, Lua execution inside the template. So that way you can iterate through a table and output what you want and, you know, just do things quite a bit differently. Um, so that just kind of gives you the idea that you can make this kind of script as complicated as you're willing to go with it. Um, don't really need to be executable Lua inside the template to be perfectly honest. I chose to do that so I offloaded more of the um, formatting in the template, whereas the way we're going to do it, you're going to see that it needs to, you need to add a lot of that formatting uh, to the template itself. So that way when um, we have to say with with this one, like the original code would need to actually have whatever, you know, if you didn't want it to all be here on the same line, you would actually have to add tabs to that. Um, but this way, if, you know, I change these to spaces, it would automatically be all spaces and that kind of thing. Um, like I said, you know, definitely feels like a little bit of overkill even to me. <coughs> to some extent, I was just kind of exploring the idea to see if I could do this. And then once I got it done, it was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah. um, because it does offer some versatility there. I can do a lot of different things in those templates. But at any rate, so we can add our, our new timer script here. And then we can open up Sheet Engine. And then if we open up that we can see we've now also got our timer script and then it's going to do the same kind of thing where it's going to be pointing at the screen here you can't see me <laughs> but it's going to be um you know actually hitting each one of these and then telling us to give us something for there so max seconds let's say yeah, it's actually a long time let's say 100 and then timer interval uh, and these would be milliseconds i do believe it is I believe 500 is a half a second. But you can kind of see there that we're getting this and it is replacing those things for us. Um, and this way we've got our timer template here. And then if we wanted to add our auto attach, we can add that. And that way we can, you know, keep adding whatever normal templates we would want in our table Lua script. We can kind of keep adding those um, on down the line until we get the script we're looking to make. Um, and then again, we wanted to not have to input that process name. We can do that pretty simply by just doing something like that there. Um, we do have to make it to where it parses this. Now this would be nil um, and we could run into problems. So what we might actually want to do is do it this way. So this way if we're not attached it will then prompt us for a process name, but if we are attached, then make sure that is a string, because uh, otherwise it will try to make that a variable. Um, but this way, if we are attached and process is set, then it will just use that. If not, then it will prompt us for an address, or for a process name, sorry. Kind of see that in action here. Go ahead and add that. Now it's you know it's still asking for a process name and timer intervals. But if we oh still got it open. But if we attach to a process and we call that oh. That's actually interesting. Yeah, I, I think the only way that would work is if we were attached to the process when that file was first loaded. I didn't think about that. So yeah, we couldn't do it that way. Um, we'll add more features to it so this way something like that can already be auto-added. Um, actually, you know what the hell was it? Let's go ahead and make that work. Kind of help il 
illustrate some of this a little better. So, what we can do to add some default values here is we just need to set something for that table. Um, so we can say local table equals our empty table here. And then that's where we can say process name equals process. And then if you didn't want to be prompted for, you know, a timer interval, you, you know, you could either manually enter it in here or we could actually add to this table. Um, but this way, all we got to do now is pass that interpret function this table so it's not creating an empty one. And then this way, i got to close this out. Do keep that in mind. If you make changes to your extension like this, um, Cheat Engine only loads them once, so you do have to close and reopen Cheat Engine. And then, yeah, so it's still going to ask us now because we're not attached to anything. Oh, I forgot to take that out, didn't I? Yes, I did. Sometimes you just gotta give yourself a disappointed sigh. At any rate, okay, so we aren't attached, so it's gonna want a process name. But then when we're ready, if we are attached, and now it shouldn't be asking us for a process name because that that table will have process name already set. We can see here it's just asking for time or interval. And there it is actually getting, well, yeah, and this is where you do kind of just got to play with your scripts a little bit. I didn't think about that. Or your templates. Um, that needs to be a string. So we need to make sure we actually nest that inside of a string properly. So that way it works. Yeah, those are numbers, so. They don't need to be inside strings. And give this another test. We'll test it with actually being attached this time. Since we know it'll ask either way. Yes. Yeah. And then there we go. So that function would actually work. make sure our template would actually work correctly. We'll launch it one more time. Not attached. Execute that. Oh. Ow, I borrowed from another function. <laughs> That's actually a little funny. At any rate, though, we can still test that out in the exact same way. And then, yeah, now we are auto-attached. So, um, definitely got to, you know, do some debugging with your templates and that kind of thing, kind of like I did there, because I made some goofy mistakes, um, which is, you know, it, it happens. Um, you're not the only one if you do similar things. Uh, you know, as much blue as I've coded, I, uh, oh god, the amount of mistakes, and some of them I will just straight up call dumb, other ones are just, you just overlook things, don't think about it at the time, it's not until you go to use it that you're like, oh man, that's right, I need to do this, <laughs> so don't feel too bad, uh, happens to everybody, um, but so that's kind of the gist of our, of our templates here. Um, so at this point, if this is all you want, you're welcome to stop here. Um, I think we're going to go and make this video a little longer. And we're going to add more settings. Um, so that way we can explicitly set a caption and a um, shortcut. Or keyboard shortcut. So that way, you know, for auto-attach, you could do, you know, Control-Alt-A or something while you're in the uh, Lua script 
table Lewis script a window um, and it will automatically call that and set it up for so to add more settings to this as I kind of said before what we'll want to do is kind of modify some of how this is working um, more explicit here so we'll want to make each one of these their own separate table and then that way we can have our template data and we can add our caption data And then here's where we can go ahead and add that shortcut data. So let's say control plus alt plus A for auto attach. And then we can even kind of illustrate how we don't have to necessarily add all of that um, so like for our timer we can make it to where it would only be if we want to change the name here um, make things a little simpler we could do that and then make it to where we can change that caption a little bit while also setting a shortcut but in a time when we don't want to add say the caption because the name will work for us we can still set it up in that same kind of way um, and so to modify the behavior down here um, all we really need to do is the way we're dealing with this because our, our Yeah, that's the loaded templates. Um, where are we actually iter out right here? This is where we're actually iterating through our templates. Um, so we can still use the name, but what we can go ahead and say is actually let me think about that. Yeah, what we want to do is make a name, caption, and then shortcut, shortcut, and then we can make it caption or name. This one doesn't need a name. Or does it? I'm trying to think of how. Yeah, no, it does not. Because the, the name only needs to be passed to this generate script function. So here we can say templates dot caption or name. the actual data table which would be the template so to speak so template dot shortcut if I'm thinking right yeah and then that should have us set up where we now have shortcuts added. Oh, nope, did something wrong. On this line, nah, that's 
part of how I load up the modules right here line 26 probably forgot a comma yep right there yeah and so it was telling us the error is here but it's because it kind of ran into it um, so sometimes you just kind of got to know to go up a line from what it's actually telling you um, just make sure if we add another one I don't make the same mistake um, some languages you can't do that. I know JSON is kind of one of those where it'll goof it up. Um, our, uh, the JavaScript object notation. Um, but Lua doesn't care. We can add that trailing comment. It won't mess it up. Close that out. Relaunch. No errors were thrown. But we did not add our shortcut um, oh yeah that's right so the template data menu item dot shortcut equals data dot shortcut shortcut. What am I doing wrong here? Yeah. Yeah, so we're registering it. We give it the caption. We give it the on click function. And we give it the shortcut. And that is our whatever table gets pulled from templates. that so we are getting the name correctly or the caption let's just see if it still works so we didn't goof that up or I didn't goof that up we're just not adding the shortcut correctly and let's let me look at a different file here and actually it. I don't think the C in shortcut, I think shortcut is one word. Um, where I'm sure that's lowercase C for all of those. Save that. Close that. There we go. So now we can do Control Alt A. Now oh, that's all right. Control Alt T. Yeah. That's funny. Templates aren't visible here, but it still has the original shortcuts. Because <laughs> in case, yeah, in case you don't get what I'm talking about here, um, you can see the the original here. Cheat table framework is Control Alt T, and then Control Alt A is that should be A O V injection. Oh, control all day, control shift A is AOB. So apparently this template menu item is actually there. Um, doesn't mess with it because we give it a different name, but it's just not visible in this form, I guess. That is interesting. I did not know that. I wonder, yeah, I'm thinking I've actually got mine set up with um, 
stuff like that. It's just I actually just have a starter one that I use. I swear I have a timer. Yeah. So I'll have to fix that on mine too. Um, at any rate, though, it doesn't have the numbers. That's what I ended up having to do too on all my custom ones. Um, is use numbers. But in, in theory, we could remove that from the form. I just don't know if that would end up goofing up the auto assembler forms. I don't think it would. Um, but at any rate, just to make life a little simpler here, we'll go ahead. And although I wonder if this will conflict with my auto assembler script ones, if they're technically present. And this is just kind of some of the stuff you do run into and you've got to come up with little workarounds for it. Um, wow, I didn't do number one or number pad one. But yeah, there now we can see we are launching the, the right one. Okay, so that's kind of it for this video. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. Um, so in the end, you know, we, we did end up adding that, those extra settings, but you kind of seen how at first, um, just having it just past the template was fine. I'll probably go ahead and try and post both of the I, I will go ahead and post uh, each version of this um, just so that way you can kind of play with either one and see which one you prefer I'm thinking most people will go ahead and use this because it's not too overly complicated um, you can see here to where I mean at the end of the day if all you want is a template you just need to kind of set it up in this way um, but if you want to add a shortcut you can if you want to change the caption to be something different from the name here you can um, but you kind of seen that first version we could set the name to whatever we wanted and this would still look it up correctly you just have to you can't just use a normal notation you had to use those square brackets and actually pass it a string um, and then we did learn that shortcut is all one word <laughs> Uh, at least for the menu item that was really the only place we needed to change it was here but I went and changed everything just so that way it kind of reflects that um, I think it just makes it help you know would help me remember in the long run if I'm using the same one word shortcut everywhere yeah so we'll go ahead and leave off this video here um, I gotta make up my mind whether we want to go ahead and move on to auto assembler templates or actually try and offload the templates to a directory um, where we would kind of do like you can see I'm doing here where I I actually have all my templates in separate files um, and then my deal actually iterates through this it does have a little more going on we won't worry about that yet but to where we can just have you know maybe just have it set up to where it just gets a file path instead of the template um, would be one real easy way to do this um, wouldn't really take that long it would just be this would pass it a file path and so instead of up here using the template directly we would just say you know templates name dot file path read that file and then pass that string here um, but if we do do something like that, I'd rather have it be a little more automatic in some way. Um, I'll have to think about the uh, simplistic way of doing that so we're not having to have separate settings file like I've got here. Um, because mine do, it, it adds a little more. Mine are set up to where it can just be just the template file and it will use the file name. Um, but then this way you can override some of the behavior. I swear I need to make an actual video on how just to use my template engine one of these days, but 
<laughs> but at any rate, um, I'll have to make up my mind on exactly what I think will be best to do that. Um, but we'll probably end up carrying on with this one and adding a little more functionality to it. Um, but for now, you can kind of get the idea that here this is ready and you could just keep adding more and more templates to this and, you know, have whatever Lua script template you want. Um, and then just know an, an auto assembler one to work similar to this um, really wouldn't need a whole lot. Um, actually, you would just be taking out um, that function that function, this function, and this one. Um, and you would just have to change it down here and load templates to the, uh, and you would get rid of that and all you'd be doing is just registering the templates, the auto assembler templates. Um, but there we would want it to have essentially this table filled with a lot more predefined data based on what's selected in the uh, memory view window. So I just feel like that one will be a little more complicated than just understanding what we're doing there. So I wanted to kind of get this script set up and done. So that way when we carry on, we'll be, and we'll literally just start with, you know, copying this file, making edits to make it work for the auto assembler, and then we'll start adding to this table. Um, and then again, you can even for this add more to this table if you've got certain things you want to, you know, always be able to add to your um, to your scripts. You can, you know, set your, you know, your your name here. Yeah, I don't put the whole thing out, but so that way you can have some predefined stuff that we can always go into your tables, um, into your templates, and you would only have to set it here. Um, to be honest with you, I'd probably just hard code my name and my own templates there. But if you planned on sharing them, that would make life a little simpler. Um, but that way, if you know, it just kind of depend upon how complex you're getting uh, and what kind of functionality you want. But but in the auto assembler templates one will be adding a lot more to this table. Um, it will end up looking a lot more like you see this table down here. So that way we can add a number of things. But yeah, we could quickly add. I think that would be kind of the main thing there would be something like that. So that way you can have a, you know, a header set up so that way you can know what cheat engine version you made the table for real quick and easy uh, put a you know a date in there and do do a lot of different things if that's what you're looking to do um, it would just kind of all depend what your what you think will be functionality that will be helpful to you um, anyway uh, so I'll post a link to the post on the open sheet tables forum um, where I end up posting this video with the code snippets um, in the video description and I will post uh, two different copies of this one where we're not the more simplistic version where we're I'll probably go and include the table like this um, but just have it to where we're only passing the, the template again and not a table for settings um, just in case there is somebody that wants that version more than any, you know, more than this, if they feel like this is more than they need anyway. Um, and we'll kind of carry on from there. Okay, hopefully this isn't two hours. <laughs> anyway, everybody have a good one, and we'll see you next time.